is one of those stories that I am definitely very embarrassed about, <laughs> but I'm also very excited to get it off my chest because I have been holding it in for quite some time and I, I think more people need to know what a weirdo I was as a kid. This is perfect timing for Valentine's Day. I think everyone loves a good, creepy, crush, obsessive Valentine's Day story. Am I wrong? I mean... <laughs> And to the person that this is about, if you happen to see this, I am sorry in advance. I fell in love with him when I first set eyes on him in the fourth grade. And yes, I say fell in love, not just liked, because my emotions were intense. I guess I'm sort of an intense person, so it makes sense. His smile was big and it was bright as the sun. Kind of like the yellow dot that was stuck to the spine of the book he was reading. My elementary school had this system for reading difficulty and it had different colored dots on each of the books to denote reading difficulty. And yellow dot was the most advanced for our grade. So that means not only was this boy cute, he was a yellow dot advanced reader. So I was like, what else could I want in a man as a fourth grader, right? Like, <laughs> like what else? And my Indian academic focused parents may or may not have had a hand in that mindset, but I'll leave that up to you to figure out. <laughs> I befriended Yellow Dot Boy as best as a shy, quiet person can befriend anyone. I was extremely quiet. I don't even remember if I said words, coherent sentences back then, but I decided that I would do everything that he did. I would just try to spend a bunch of time with him. So there was this news network my elementary school had that would have announcements and jokes and the weather, and I joined it as well because he was an anchor. I was the switch person who would switch the cameras between the weather people and the anchors. So I did that. Um, I also joined this book club thing where you would talk to students over webcams from different schools about books. I actually ended up loving that because I love reading, but originally I think a part of me joined it just because I knew that he was going to do it. So. There you have it. <laughs> I also, I took extra care to never bring um, peanut butter sandwiches to school because I knew that he was allergic to peanut butter. And he was also allergic to any concept of ever liking me, I was pretty sure, because he never seemed to consider me in that way at any time. But in my head, I somehow understood that to be Challenge accepted. Like, I'm just gonna spend all of my time with him in order to make this happen. Like, maybe he just doesn't like me because he doesn't know me enough, you know? Like, he just hasn't spent the time with me. But deep down, like, underneath all of this, I'm super cool. It just He just hasn't figured it out yet, so. Um. <laughs> so I was really close friends with this other girl, and I'm pretty sure he liked her, even though all she read were Orange Dot books. I mean, I mean, come on, right? Like. <laughs> I'm kidding. I was just too scared of rejection to tell him my feelings. At this point, you might be thinking, you know, why don't you just tell him and the story would be over and we can all move on with our lives. And yes, that is what normal kids might have done, but I was certainly not normal. I just, I just never told him. And instead I just kept creating situations where maybe we would spend more time together. One example is I decided to throw these Halloween parties that I would have every year. And I mostly threw them so that he would come and a few other friends that I had. It was very official. I printed the invitations at home by myself and I made them on Microsoft Word. And I used carefully chosen word art and laid everything out as best as I could. And I, I basically thought myself to be Johannes Gutenberg, inventor of the printing press. Like I took this very seriously. <laughs> After I printed them, I would put an RSVP date and my phone number, which will become important later on in the story. Even as these plans unfolded with the aid of my best friend who was always so supportive of all of these crazy plans, which I really appreciate. Get you a real friend who approves of your obsessive tendencies, you know? <laughs> Even as these plans unfolded, I was just always in this dulled state of total misery. Like, I cannot tell you how miserable I was that entire time. And I knew that Yellow Dot Boy did not like me, but somehow I was doomed to repeat these patterns over and over again. It's like I was on a freight train and it was moving too fast and it was too late to hop off and this was just my life now. I just, I couldn't stop it. But as we entered middle school, him and I slowly grew apart. 
uh, he joined the basketball team. He became one of the, I guess, popular kids. And I was definitely not one of those kids. I was still in my kind of shy and quiet box. Pretty sure I still wore those chains, those wallet chains that go across your jeans. Rock those back then for a couple years. Scrunchies are back in, but I, I did that too. So I, I did it before it was cool. <laughs> but finally, my worst fears came to pass in the eighth grade. I was holding my annual Halloween party as per usual, and a couple of hours before the party, I get a call from him on the number that I put on the invitation for the RSVP. And he leaves me a voicemail and it says something like, Hey Ambika, thank you so much for the thought. I really appreciate you inviting me and I appreciate the thought, but I'm not going to be able to make it this year because I have some cousins visiting. This is a very normal message. It sounds like his mom, it sounds like his mom wrote it. I mean, <laughs> like it sounds quite formal, very well put together, but he's a yellow dot reader, you know, so maybe he wrote it himself. I'll give him some credit. <laughs> I was so devastated. I locked myself in the bathroom and I just cried and I cried. And I was like, man, this is probably an excuse. Like, I don't know, I guess we're just not close friends enough anymore for him to come to my party. And I guess that was true, but it still hurt. I was still sad, but I pulled it together and I came out of that bathroom and I still threw my Halloween party because I take party throwing very seriously and I still do. I, I threw the party and it was fine. And you know, we didn't really talk much after that, I think we would sometimes say hello to each other in passing, but that's all I can really remember. But then high school came, and although we hardly ever talked, I still did remain hung up on him in this weird, twisted kind of way. It's like this seed I couldn't quite dislodge from my system, and I'm still not sure why that was, but you know, I guess young love is hard to shake. And I also, I will say I had no life, like I had nothing else to fixate on that was interesting. So maybe that just decided to take up all my headspace. Even after we'd grown apart and we never talked, I still didn't bring peanut butter sandwiches to lunch. Like I still adhered to that. <laughs> but, but finally, you know, we went to different colleges. So I was free of all of that. And I knew that I, I wouldn't think about him anymore. And I was right. Like I moved on in my life. I made new friends and I even got into a relationship and I mostly forgot about him until graduate school when I was home visiting for winter break. And I ran into Yellow Dot Boy's mom at the local grocery store. And I was carrying some bananas, which I think is funny because they're, they're yellow. So it seems like yellow is our color. <laughs> at this point, I, I'm, this is me in grad school. I'm supposed to have matured, right? Like I'm no longer that shy girl who can hardly speak. I'm supposed to be cool now, like I'm better now. But somehow I still felt my throat close up when I saw his mom because it just took me back to that point in time again. And that day is when it hit me. In a traffic light, you got red, you got yellow, and you got green, right? Yellow is the middle. And I think Yellow Dot Boy is such an apt name for him because I was always stuck in this weird middle with him. And it was my fault. I never found closure because I never could bring myself to tell him how I felt all of that time. Even though it took up so much of my headspace and my mind and my thoughts all of those years, I, I just couldn't bring myself to do it because I was too scared of that rejection. But as I realized that, it was just a fleeting thought, and I thought, well, at least you know that now, and we can all just, you know, move on. But then the pandemic hit, and I had so much time, maybe too much time, for reflection to think about my life, and think about all the stuff and all the relationships I had been in, and all of the things that I had feared admitting as I grew up because of my really shy nature. And I realized I was tired of that, you know? I was tired of always hiding what I thought, and feeling like I was a prisoner in my own mind. So I decided what I was gonna do is I was going to finally break out of that and I'm going to tell him. Even though it's been years, I'm going to tell him that I had that crush on him back then. I saw this challenge that said, um, tell your crush from a while ago that you crushed on them. And I'm like, this is a simple challenge and I feel like it's a great idea for me specifically. So I went ahead and I did it. I. I just wrote him a message confessing that I used to like him back then and um, I even told him that I had sent him a candy gram valentine back in middle school anonymously and he didn't know it was me but it was and he sent back a message that was super sweet it was that he was flattered and he appreciated it and that he hopes I'm taken care of and that I'm well 
and it was very sweet. And nothing crazy came of it, that, that was it, that was all our interaction ended there. But it felt so empowering just to tell him and to get it out there. Because if you imagine all the years that I liked him and never said anything and how much that weighed on me um, to finally just, just tell him, even though it doesn't matter anymore, it did matter to me. At that moment, after I felt a kind of relief, like, hey, I sent this and the world didn't crumble and everything was fine, I realized why love hurts so much. Whether that's love for a crush or a partner or a parent or a friend, it's because love inevitably always does have an expiration date. You know, whether it's through death, whether it's through a breakup, whether it's through just naturally growing apart, love does end. And that can be really sad and that can be hard to deal with. Even my crush, which was so intense back then for so many years, it also came to an end. But although it did hurt to love Yellow Dot Boy for so long, it taught me a really important lesson. And that lesson is that when it comes to love, the middle is not great. It's far better to confess your love and take a chance and to fail miserably or to move on definitively. To be in or to be out. To be green or to be red. Turns out that yellow dots were not so great after all. And that is a lesson that I will never forget. And I've taken that forward with me and I've tried to be more definitive and uh, forward in my life to make decisions and confess to people if I'm feeling a certain way and tell the people that I love that I love them. I, I think that's a really great way to be, to realize that we don't have all the time in the world. And if you wait too long, you can miss your chance. With that, I hope this Valentine's Day, if you have someone in mind that you have feelings for, or you have someone in mind who you used to have feelings for but you never told them and it's always weighed on you, I recommend just telling them because hey, it's a pandemic, we don't know what's going to happen in the world, everything is up in the air. I think the recipients who receive that message are never saddened, I think they're just happy that someone loved them. So. Thank you so much for listening to my very embarrassing story. I think when people see me now, they think that I'm normal, but it's nice to shatter that and be like, no, I was a weirdo, uh, <laughs> not so fast. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, whether you have a Valentine or not. I hope that you take time to enjoy the day and celebrate love and buy the discounted chocolate the day after. Thank you and take care. I'll see you soon.